I'm Racer Magazine's Marshall Pruitt. Let's take a look inside IMSA's fascinating new hybrid GTP cars. The next episode in our GTP 101 tech video series features the on and off track charging of IMSA's energy storage system, the ESS, and its sizable 700 volt battery, which follows our first video on the subject, detailing the various components included in the package in the installation process for the GTP models. Although every GTP team receives a large battery charger from WAE Technologies, the makers of the ESS units, those chargers plug into a wall socket, and most teams say they've never actually used them. Cool trick for charging the battery takes place when the GTP cars are being warmed up. Do that about an hour or so before each session. With their respective engines running, fans in the paddock at Daytona and the rest of the stops on the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship Tour should listen and pay attention for a sudden increase in revs during the warm-up process. That's the audio signal that a hybrid GTP car from Acura, BMW, Cadillac, or Porsche is charging its battery, and it happens somewhat quickly. Working in conjunction with the Bosch Motor Generator Unit, the MGU, it's attached to the front of the x track transmission, the input shaft connected to the internal combustion engine. The ICE is engaged, and the secondary input shaft for the MGU is engaged, and there, hidden from sight, the ICE spins the MGU up to a maximum of 20,000 RPMs during the engine warm-up process. It's effectively a closed-loop charging system between the ICE and MGU designed to charge the battery without the need for the car to be moving. So that's why we hear the engine revs rise to get that MGU spinning hard and sending electricity to the battery. Once the battery is charged to the level dictated by Acura, BMW, Cadillac, and Porsche, and it isn't necessarily taken up to 100%, the revs return to normal, and the warm-up process either continues or is completed. Out on track, the ESS is charged in two primary ways, and one might come as a slight surprise. The most familiar form of charging, kinetic energy recovery system, like the ones found in Formula One, well, that happens in the brake zones, where the MGU activates under braking, the harvest energy that's sent and stored by a battery until it's called upon to go back and assist the ice while accelerating. Same exact process is part of the WAE technology system. GTP cars harvest energy when they break, but as one manufacturer told me, it takes many braking zones to replenish a battery. It's on the lower end of a charge. Another manufacturer said each braking zone contributes somewhere between 3 and 5% to the battery. So if we're talking about the Rolex 24 Daytona with five major braking events per lap, that's returning just 15 to 25% to the battery on each tour. Altogether, it means that depending on the circuit, and the number of braking events each lap, energy harvesting under braking isn't always going to be enough to keep the battery in a happy state of charge. And that's where the other charging strategy comes into play. As we discussed with the battery charging process, while the GTP cars sit in their garages and have the engines warmed, the same direct connection between the ICE and the MGU is also used while those Acuras, BMWs, Cadillacs, and Porsches are accelerating in a straight line. This is a particularly interesting function. In every other hybrid series, harvesting is only considered while braking, while slowing down, because the drag on the ice and the loss of ice power while charging in a straight line would lead to being passed by cars that aren't charging. With the MGU activated, it has a similar effect to dragging the brake pedal with your foot, and usually that's a bad thing when you're blasting between corners. What makes this a non-liability in IMSA with its GTP cars is found with a unique horsepower limit all models are held to. IMSA holds its GTP cars to 670 horsepower, and with the hybrid engines in mind, the ESS and the MGU can contribute anywhere from 40 to 67 of that 670 horsepower, depending on the peak number set by IMSA at each track. Where this takes an interesting turn in terms of battery charging is with that 670 horsepower cap. The ICE can make plenty of power and do the entire 670 on its own or fall back a little bit and let the battery, the ESS, and that MGU contribute that 40 to almost 70 horsepower to reach the 670 limit. Well, if the ESS and MGU are engaged while the GTP car is on the straight, 
the hybrid engine management system doesn't let the MGU rob power from the ice and place the driver at risk of being overtaken. The system sees the MGU engage and through the torque sensors on the rear axles, which I'll explore in a separate video, the management system compensates by dialing up the ice power to keep the hybrid powertrain chugging along at 670, even when the MGU is wound up to 20,000 RPMs and charging. So when GTP teams want to get a good battery charge going, they rely on a ton of electronics to do it on the straights and do it without sapping power, thanks to the closed loop charging system and the hybrid engine management system, making sure that charging doesn't pull the power down below that 670 horsepower limit. Like I said, it's really cool. Thanks for watching. Visit racer.com for more videos and stories about IMSA's exciting new hybrid GTP cars.